Terraria fans are toxic. I don't know how else to say it. And if you're confused as to what I'm talking about, allow me to point you in the direction of my last video. No, not that one. The other last one. Yeah, that one. Not only has it become my most popular video, it's also become my least popular video. I have never seen a like to dislike ratio that bad. But it's not the dislikes that makes me think Terraria fans are toxic. It's the comments. Within the 120 or so comments on that video, I have received genuine death threats and just downright hateful insults. Feel free to pause the video and read them. Now here's the thing, I want to get this straight. I am not offended by these comments. I have not cried myself to sleep over these comments. I have not wanted to delete my channel over these comments. I just find it extremely entertaining how there are people out there who get so bent out of shape when someone disses their favorite game that hasn't been popular since its inception, apart from a few jumps in 2020 when everyone was on lockdown, that they feel they have to absolutely obliterate their keyboard to tell me how wrong and stupid I am for having an opinion. Oh, by the way, for comparison on popularity, that red line is Minecraft. The better overall game. but. Don't take my word for it, just ask the 172 million monthly players. Or you could ask the 50,000 or so monthly Terraria players. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. And that brings us to today's video. Why Terraria is subjectively a bad game. Now, before we start this video, let's play a quick game. Hi, my name is Cola. Can you tell me what subjective means? A, a wrong opinion. B, pertaining to or a characteristic of an individual, personal. Or C, an opinion so bad it deserves death threats. No, do you need help? It's B, pertaining to or a characteristic of an individual. This video is my own personal opinion based on my own personal experiences with Terraria. But I understand that there are some people out there who won't be able to live with the fact that someone has a differing opinion about your favorite game and you'll get your widow feelings hurt. And if that's the case, you should listen to Nicholas VD4HD and go touch some grass. It's green, by the way, despite what the Terraria wiki might have you believe. In case people missed the sarcasm on that one, that was a joke. So today, I want to take a look at Terraria and compare it to Minecraft, and give my own personal list of pros and cons that I have with the game. And yes, I think the game Terraria has some positives, so let's start there. Uh, well, there's the, um... Uh, hang on, give me, give me a second, um, Terraria's got the, uh, I'm joking, I'm joking, don't get your pixelated undies in a twist. First off, the character creation. I like the sheer amount of options you get to customize your little dude or doodad. And at the same time, there's also not so many options that it gets overstimulating and making choosing a design difficult. Not only that, but you can have multiple characters and choose from them within the game, unlike in Minecraft, where you have to do it while in the launcher, and if you forget to change your skin by the time the game is launched, you have to close the game completely and redo it all. Next is the fact that creating a world doesn't automatically spawn you into it. At first, I absolutely hated this mechanic. I thought it was so stupid, especially since they didn't explain that feature, so after waiting five minutes for my world to be created, you can probably understand my confusion and annoyance when it just kicked me back to the loading screen. However, since then, I have come to appreciate this feature because I cannot tell you how many times I've been playing Minecraft and I've wanted to just have a world created or even just copy a world and let it sit, but I've had to sit through the world generating screen, back out of the world once it finally generates, and then go back to the menu. For Terraria, that's genuinely a good feature. I love it. Next is the expansiveness. Now, since I was not able to get far because of my limited knowledge and the poor instructions, I have since watched some videos and seen just how insane this game can get. If I had to compare it to Minecraft on this factor alone, it would be the clear winner. I think even Mojang would agree. In Minecraft, once you kill the Ender Dragon and maybe the Wither if you count that, that's really it. The game loses its sense of purpose and direction because there is no end game anymore. But in Terraria, there's like over 30 bosses to fight. That is insane. So content wise, Terraria is probably the better game, or at least very much up there with Minecraft. They could definitely compete. Now onto the cons. Please just remember this is my subjective opinion and because I have certain needs and wants when I play a video game, some games may not offer what I need. First off, layout. The UI in this game is just awful. Okay, maybe not awful, maybe just mediocre. Like on the very, very, very far end of the scale of mediocrity, like dangerously close to awful. First off, the options for this game should not be so small that I can't read them. Now, I get that there is a setting to change the size, but I should not have to change the text to be big enough to be legible 
right off the bat. I mean, can you tell me why the play button is so small? I should not have to change the game settings immediately after launching it because I can't even see where the play button is. Not to mention when I'm trying to exit a game, how do I do that? Compared to Minecraft's UI and layout, Terraria is once again awful. So let's take a look at the different screens in each game as presented when first launched. That means I will be looking at the game's menus without going into the settings to change the UI scale or button size or anything. Both start screens are good. They give me the relevant info that I need. If you want to be fair, I have no idea what these two buttons on the Minecraft start screen do because these logos don't explain anything, but then again, if they were important, they'd probably be labeled as such. World creation screens. Minecraft's is simple. Create new world, join world, copy world, etc. On Terraria's, it also seems simple, except I can't see the play world button or any of the other options because they're all extremely small. Other settings that aren't so important, like renaming, deleting, and editing, are fine being small, I guess, but the button that lets you play the game should not be. Now, exit screens. Minecraft's is once again simple. You hit the escape button, it pauses the game, and it takes you to the exit menu. You've got all the necessary options. Back to game, advancements, options, save and quit to title. Easy to read, easy to understand, and easy to find. Now let's look at two areas. Hitting escape doesn't pause the game, unlike every other game on the planet. In fact, hitting the escape button doesn't seem to do much unless you're looking for it. Instead, that brings up your inventory and crafting, which is very hard to see. In order to see the menus, you have to hit escape, go down to the bottom right where no one is paying attention and hit the settings button. But that is too many steps for it is a very simple function. Now you can auto pause, but guess what? You have to go to the settings and turn that on. That's just stupid. Also, if you want to save and exit the game, you have to go to the bottom right corner and hit the settings button and then hit save and exit. That is also stupid. So with all this in mind, I think it's fair to say that an introductory player who had no prior knowledge of the game and or no help from experienced friends would have a difficult time navigating the menus, let alone the game of Terraria. Which brings me nicely to my next point, the instructions and tutorials to actually start playing the game. I will be using the Minecraft tutorials for a comparison. First off, I should not have to spend the first five minutes of the game reading. Secondly, there should be an option to go back and view the old tips and guides, because as far as I'm aware from my playthrough, once the guide says something, that's it. He's on to the next tip. However, I will say the inclusion of a guide or a companion who helps you throughout your world from the get-go is really nice. The amount of times I'd be trying to do something but then see a slime coming towards me and having Andrew the guide kill it for me was amazing. Love that feature. Let's look at Minecraft. It gives me a step-by-step -step guide on the base mechanics of the game. I spawn into the world and guess what it tells me? Use W, A, S, and D to move. This should be common knowledge, but it's still nice of them to include it. Next, it tells me to use the left click to punch a tree. Next, it tells me to hit E on the keyboard to open my inventory. This guide of making me do the actions helps form muscle memory and introduces me to the new mechanics. On Terraria, however, I have to scroll through pages and pages of information hoping I remember everything just to forget it and realize that the guide won't repeat the instructions. But before you can even do that, you have to figure out how to talk to the guide. There's no little message above his head that says, right click me to talk. For all I know, this guy could be the very first enemy. There is no explanation of why he's there. Instead, you have to follow the NPC around until he finally stops and then click buttons until something happens. Finally, after figuring out you have to right click him, he talks to you. Instead, what should happen is that he should walk around and introduce me to the world and at the same time, tell me to punch this tree and hit escape to open my crafting menu and make a workbench. Then after that, he should tell me to place this workbench on the ground and stand next to it and hit escape to open my crafting menu and make some rudimentary tools, armor, and maybe even tell me how to build a bleeding house. Which, by the way, I finally figured out how to do because I talked to my one friend who's beaten Terraria like a bajillion times. Last time I couldn't figure out how to place a door and he said that doors can only be placed if there's a block above them and below them, which is what I did and would you look at that. Oh my gosh, I finally did it. Let's go, my torment can finally end. So no thanks to any of the YouTube tutorials or the wiki. Finally, the last con I have is the fans. You guys are so unbelievably toxic and rude. I sincerely hope you don't kiss your mothers with those mouths. Now, I understand being offended by things online. I get offended by things that people say online too. However, I don't go as far as to threaten people's lives just because they have a differing viewpoint than me. Especially especially over a pixelated game, okay? It's not religion or politics or something that could affect your life. It is an 8-bit video game that was made in 2014 or whatever. Instead, I offer this thing called constructive criticism. You've probably never heard of it because you're too busy bullying people online. Now, some of the people in the comments on my last video were genuinely nice and helpful. They even helped explain why my game was running slow and how to fix it and even asked that I give Terraria another chance. But to those people who got so butthurt because they found out that there's one person out of the 
8 billion people on Earth that doesn't like their favorite game that they decided to send death threats and post genuinely low IQ comments, seek help. I know an excellent therapist who can help you with your antisocial tendencies. It's called turning off your phone and going outside. But do that after watching this video. Thanks. But here's the thing. I don't think Terraria is a bad game. At all. In fact, I think it could be a really fun game. These are just some issues I had with the game while trying to play it that made the experience not so great for me. So, toxic Terraria fans who like to leave hate comments, hello, you just got rage baited. Again. <laughs> I've got nothing else to say. I will see you in the next video, but in the meantime, enjoy the sick outro and don't forget to smile. Goodbye! <laughs>